Welcome to this unit where I briefly want to explain how we can use social survey to implement our own choice experiments. Well, before I get into it, first comment, usually if you start up social survey, all the interface will be in German. To change it, you can go to your account up here and then go to bevorzugte Sprache English, save it. So the interface language will change to English, making it usually much easier. With this out of the picture, I can go to one of my already prepared um, questionnaires. And here I'm going to explain what to do in four, more or less four different steps, whereas the first three are just regarding different variables which I'm going to be generating. Well, I have two choice experiments here, so they're more or less the same. So we're just going to have the look, a look at the first one. In my situation, I have 72 choice cards and I want my participants each to see eight randomly selected choice cards, whereas those eight should always be different ones. With this in the back of our head, the first thing we have to do is generate for each of the 72 choice cards one variable. This might seem like quite some tedious work, but for the post-processing of the data after I well, gave the survey to participants, get the answers, downloaded the answers, and have to prepare the data for further processing, estimations, and so forth, it will save us a lot of time. So some extra work here, a lot of time saving later on. Well, as I said, 72 choice cards, so 72 times the same variable. So each of these variables should be of the type scale, fully labeled, and with three scale points. Well, at least in this version, which I'm going to use, because I have alternative one, alternative two, and an opting out or neither of the two alternatives option. If you use more or less, you can adjust the number of scale points, but I would recommend always have the minimum alternative one, then alternative two, three, four, and so forth, and the maximum being the last one or the opting out version. To assure that it always will be in this order, we furthermore have to go down here to scale and select direction of the scale ascending and the scales minimum is on the left or top side. That's important to choose not only for the desktop version, which looks like the one down here, but even more so if you would show it on a mobile. Because on a mobile, he would usually start with maximum and then go towards a minimum. So with this version here would ve look very nice in a desktop context. In the uh, mobile version, they would see first opting out alternative two and alternative one if you didn't change anything, which might confuse the participants quite a lot. So to make it easier, select this option I can just show you, this is usually the default, so bottom version. Go instead with left and top side. Making it look nice in both alternatives. Well, that's the first part. That's the variables I need for each of my choice cards. Then, as I said, I'm not going to show all 72 variables and choice cards to my participants, just eight of them. And for this, I want the eight to be randomly drawn from those 72. So I'm additionally going to use a random generator. That's the CE1 here. That's of the type random generator. And then with the codes, I'm just going to input the numbers of my choice cards. So I could just go 0, 1, 0, 2, up to 72. I have added here some... Uh, picture, treatment information. I wouldn't need this and in the actual experiment I even don't go back to it, but this was the original plan I wanted to use. So here it would suffice if you just have the 
numbers which you're going to use. On the right, you see how often each of those numbers already has been drawn. And that's an important part. We want to not only have them drawn like one number all of the time and some numbers never at all. So we go to detail settings, drawing. And first off, well, I said I want to have eight codes, eight cards per participant. So I'm going to put eight here. So he will generate randomly eight numbers between one and 72. So participant will see randomly one or eight of those 72 cards. The important part to select with type of drawing, first of equally distributed, this means that in the end it would look almost the same as here. So each of the choice cards will be with almost the same probability than all the others. Another important part, it should be draw without returning. This will um, lead to the situation that the participant always sees eight different cards. And well, it would be very problematic, but theoretically possible if it's a draw with returning, that participants just see eight times the same card. We want to avoid this, that's why we select equally distributed, draw without returning. So he gets eight different randomly selected choice cards. Well, that's already the second part we have to do. The third part regarding variables is that I mentioned we have want to have this look good on the desktop version and the mobile version. Because, well, we do not know how they access this survey. So we need to first check which type of device are they actually using. Are they using desktop with a wide screen or are they using mobile or pad version which has a long screen? Well, I'm going to put this here with the other parts. This variable I'm going to use to find out which device they're using is a type device and request variable. Here with devices, I can select form factor, which gives me information on the computer, the tablet, or the mobile phone. Theoretically, you could also go with screen size, but well, I would rather go with what type it is. I would also say a bit easier to analyze later on. So once you selected this as well, we have finished all the preparatory work and we can go to comp uh, compose questionnaire. At the very beginning of the questionnaire, so very first page, I would place this type, this device variable so that he directly collects the information what device are they using. You could also put your random number generators here. Since I want to have it close to the respective choice experiment, I put them on the first page of the choice experiment. The only important part, random generators need to be before any of the choice parts happen. So either before the first or in the beginning of the first page regarding the choice experiment or the very first pages before it. Well, with this done, we can go to this code down here. This PHP code actually tells him, first off, that's the introductory if clause, which type of screen I'm using. We have this form factor FMF of the variable D6. So D6 is which device he is using, form factor FMF or this wait, lower line FMF tells us which type of device they're using. In particular, five and four are long screens, are pads and mobiles. So all the code you see here, all these 72 first versions are for mobiles. The respective picture they're going to be shown for their um, choice um, treatment or for the choice card is the version for mobiles. So it's optimized for mobile view or for long screen view. Down here with the else, well, these questions are the same, but I have different P 
pictures. I have here the pictures optimized for the desktop view, for a widescreen view. As I said, well, looks the same with regard to questions and informations. So let's have a closer look how each of these parts look like. First off, I have this value of C075. Zero, uh, C075 was my random generator. So what he checks is which number did the random generator draw. If he draw a one, this means my participant should see choice card one. If he was a six, they should see choice card six. Not only should they see choice card one or six, they also should get the respective question. Here my questions for the choice card started with three, so not so convenient, but well, first choice card, they will see picture one, so the first choice card, they will get the question C003, which is the one for the first choice card. If I am at the six card, so if the random generator generates a six, I will show them picture number six, so image number six here, and they get the question for choice card number six. So as you see here for my numbering, I have always to detract two. If you think it through, actually with the second choice experiment we did this, this starts at one. So first choice card, picture one and question one. Well, in either case, that's how each of these parts work. I will check if the first drawn number is one, two, until 72. That's down here, the last one. And show the participants the respective treatment, choice card, and the respective question. Here, there's one thing we still need to keep in mind. As I said, C075 is the random generator. The X01 means the first generated number. So here I'm at page one, the first choice participants have to make, but I have eight of these choices. So I have eight or seven additional eight pages in total for my experiment. That's what we see here. Those eight pages are the eight pages for this choice experiment. The code in all eight pages looks more or less the same. The only difference is here this X01, uh, two, sorry, X02, because I'm at page two, he's using the second randomly generated number. If I go to page six, I have X06, the sixth randomly generated number. So this is what I have to change every page. In general, the whole code is exactly the same. So you may maybe just prepare the code once, copy this in a PHP code for the first question, then for the second one, just go with search and replace and replace X01 with X02. For the next one, replace X02 with X03 and so forth. So this will give you always the respective number which was drawn. And this brings us also to the end of this unit, because once you have done all of this, you will get in each of your variables the selection of the participant. Did he select one, alternative one, two, or opting out three? With regard to the randomly selected card. And, well, since we selected an equal distribution with the card selection, you will assure that if you have enough participants, you will have an equal amount of cards or of answers for each choice card. Well, as I said, that's about it for this tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something helpful and I say goodbye. See you next time.